Good morning everyone and welcome to a Sunday morning service. My name is Boyan and along with my wife Samantha we lead New Season Church. And our vision for New Season Church is to be a place where people are not united based on their background or their culture, but are united based on their love for God. There will be a place where people are not judged for their past but appointed to their future in Christ. And our mission is to help people find God, find out who they are and what their identity is in Him and develop a real relationship with Him. Discover purpose. What has God called them to do? What is that gifting that God has given them to pursue their calling and ultimately help them make a difference in the world around them to the message of grace and the kingdom? So we want to welcome you this morning and thank you for choosing us as your place of worship. And if you're new this morning, we want to ask you to let us know by following the link in the description. We'd love to be able to touch base with you during the week and just find out how better we can serve you. Well, there's a couple of things this morning uh, that are available in the description below the video. Firstly, is my notes are available for you on the YouVersion uh, Bible app and the link is in the description. Secondly, parents, uh, our Kids Church curriculum is available for you to make use of to help your children grow spiritually during this time and you can uh, you can have access to those resources for free by following the link in the description. If you haven't liked our Facebook page as yet, please do so by clicking like and so that you can stay connected with us and be notified of the times that we do go live and the resources that we are making available uh, to everyone. And lastly, if you would like to re-listen to our sermons, they are available as MP3s to download or listen to online for free and you can follow that link in the description as well well don't you want to join me in prayer this morning father god we come to you in the name of jesus this morning and we're just so thankful lord for another day father god another opportunity to come into your throne room of grace father god we thank you that this is the day that you have made and we will choose to rejoice and be glad in it So, Father, we thank you this morning that we can come into your throne room of grace with boldness, where we find help in time of need. And, Father, we thank you that we can do that not based on what we do or how good we are, but it is based on the perfect work that was done on the cross by Jesus Christ. That He is the way, the truth, and the life. That He is the door, the entrance way to you. And so, this morning, we're just so thankful that we have that opportunity That through Christ we are able to come before you and receive of you this morning. That we can come before you this morning and get into your word and and allow that word to penetrate into our hearts. And produce a harvest of righteousness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well this morning my message is entitled Overcomer. And more specifically I want to look at. How do we overcome one of the greatest battles that we face? And that is the battle of fear. You know, as kids, we grow up fearing things. We fear thunder and, and, and lightning storms. Then as we get older, we as teenagers start fearing uh, possibly rejection. And then as we get into adulthood, we start fearing other things. We start fearing loss of a spouse, of a child, of a job. We start fearing failure. You know, uh, failure, moral failure, or financial failure. And we even start fearing the unknown. And God has something to say about fear. And we find that in 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And so here in this scripture, we see clearly that fear is not a part of God. That anxiety and fear has nothing to do with the Spirit of God and where those, those things are present, where fear and anxiety is present, the Spirit of God is not there or rather the Spirit of God did not uh, author those things in our lives. And so God is very clear that the Spirit of fear is contrary to Him. And so fear is not of God. And if fear is not of God, then we're not going to accept it. Because anything that is not of God is something that we are going to reject. And some say that fear is the opposite of faith. But rather, fear is placing faith, but in the wrong things. Fear is placing faith in the wrong things. 
And if God is going to empower us to overcome fear, then let's start defining what fear is. What is fear? Well, we could say that fear is placing faith in the what-ifs. Fear is placing faith in the what-ifs. And this is exactly what Moses did when God called him and asked him to go to Pharaoh and instruct Pharaoh to release God's people. This is what Moses did when God asked him to act on God's behalf. And so God instructs him to go to Pharaoh. And this is how Moses responds. In Exodus 4.1 it says, And Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Instead of placing faith in God's promises, Moses turns around and immediately starts going through the worst case scenarios. He starts thinking about what, what if they don't listen to me? What if I can't do this? And what if this happens? And what if that happens? Instead of placing his faith in God's promises, Moses starts placing his faith in the what ifs. And isn't that what we do as people? Instead of focusing on God's promises, we start focusing on the what ifs. We start placing our faith in the what ifs. What if I lose my job? What if my kids get hurt? What if I have to wear a mask for the rest of my life? And during this time, during uh, the lockdown, there are a lot of what ifs. There are a lot of uh, possible scenarios that a lot of us are going through. You are running through what if scenarios. I'm running through what if scenarios. And instead of placing our faith in God's promises, we start placing our faith in the what ifs. And this is why fear is such a dangerous thing and such a powerful weapon that the enemy will use against us because he will try to distract us and put our minds and our focus and our faith on the what ifs instead of God's promises. And so why do the what ifs matter? Why do the what ifs matter? Firstly, what you fear the most reveals what you value the most. What you fear the most reveals what you value the most. So if you fear losing your marriage, well, you value your marriage. If you fear your kids getting hurt, you value your kids. If you fear losing your job or you can't pay the bills, well, you value financial security. So what we fear the most will often reveal what we value the most. But secondly, what we fear the most will often reveal where we trust God the least. What we fear the most reveals where we trust God the least. And that's a little bit of a gut punch, isn't it? That's a little bit of an ouch statement. That's a statement where we have to introspect and makes us uncomfortable because more often than not, we know it's true. And so if we're afraid of losing a marriage, what that means is that we don't trust God to lead us in developing a fruitful marriage. If we afraid we're going to lose our kids, then we don't trust God to protect our children. If we lose or if we fear uh, losing our job or we can't pay the bills, then we're not trusting God to provide for us financially. But I want to encourage you this moment uh, to, to, to be retrospective, introspective this morning, to look within yourself and say, what are the areas of my life that I am fearful or where are the areas of my life that I'm not trusting God. And so I want to do something practical this morning and I want us to look at where we are in our lives this morning and say, where am I not trusting God? And what I want you to do this morning, I want to challenge you, is that if you're taking notes this morning, maybe in your notebook or in your Bible app, I want you to write the statement this morning, I'm not trusting God with and then blank and then put in the area in your life that you're not trusting God with or that you're fearful in. So if you say, look, I'm right now I'm worried, I'm fearful about my job, I'm fearful about uh, paying the bills. I want you to write there, I'm not trusting God with my financial provision. And I want you to think about it, I want you to give it a name. But as you're doing this, I want you to remind yourself of the fundamental truth that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, 
one of love and one of a sound mind. So why do we want to write this thing down? Well, we want to define it because we cannot overcome something unless we define it. We cannot battle with something unless we know what we're battling against. It's like a moving target. So you want to define what is that fear that you are needing to overcome. So if you've written that down this morning, I want us to get practical and see how do we, how does God empower us to overcome these fears in our lives? How does God empower us to overcome these fears? So firstly, what we want to do is we want to acknowledge our fear and choose to trust God anyway. So the first step to overcoming our fears is to acknowledge your fear and choose to trust God anyway. In other words, what you're not going to do is you're not going to close your eyes, put your fingers in your ears and keep repeating, this isn't happening, this isn't happening. You're going to acknowledge your fear. You're going to acknowledge what you're nervous about. You're going to acknowledge where you're taking strain. And you're going to say, I'm nervous about this. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. I'm afraid that I won't be able to pay for my bills. I'm afraid I'm going to get sick. You're going to acknowledge your fear and then you're going to trust God anyway. You're going to trust God anyway. You see, we don't deny that there's a problem. We just deny the influence of the problem on the promises of God. And you see, this is what David did in the Old Testament. David did it on two separate occasions. Firstly, when he came up against Goliath, David walks out into the battlefield and he looks at Goliath and he doesn't turn around to the Israelite armies and say, what are you guys talking about? There's no Goliath. There's no problem. You guys are just imagining things. He doesn't say that. What he does rather do is he acknowledges there is a Goliath. There is this very big uh, uh, man that's going to really threaten to wipe us out. So he acknowledges that there's a very real danger. But what he chooses to do is he chooses to put his trust in God. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to come up against the armies of God. So he says, who is this and what influence does this person have or this danger or this problem have on the promises of God? He acknowledged the problem and he still decided to trust God anyway. And the second time we see this is when he comes up with Saul. Now before David was king, uh, Saul was the king. And as David was coming up, Saul became very jealous of him and started to plot to kill him. And so David was terrified. David went into hiding. David was terrified of Saul. And this is how David responded to this, to this threat or to this fear. We see that in Psalm 56, 2-4. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And if you're taking notes this morning... Uh, I want you to highlight or underline in God. David said in God, not in the what ifs, not in what I'm afraid. He said in God, I trust and am not afraid. And now in this passage, David starts to get a little bit arrogant and, and goes on to say, well, what can mere mortals do to me? Well, if we're really honest, they could have killed him. So the fear was very real. You know, it wasn't, he wasn't saying, well, you know, what can God, you know, I put my trust in God and what can these guys do to me? No, no, no. The fear was, was of something that was a real danger. There was a real consequence to that. But I believe what David does in this, in this portion, he moves, changes his perspective. He moves from an earthly and temporal perspective to a heavenly or an eternal perspective. Then he says, look, at the end of the day, when he talks about what can mere mortals do to me, he says, look, at the end of the day, I am a citizen of heaven. That my life on earth is nothing compared to my eternity with my living God. 
He says, look, you can pursue me, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm a child of God. You can pursue me, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm a citizen of heaven and of an unshakable kingdom. That you can pursue me, but it doesn't change the fact that God still has purpose on my life. That you can pursue me, and it still will not change the fact that God is still on the throne, and His perfect will will be done in my life. David changed his perspective from a temporal, earthly perspective to an eternal, heavenly perspective. And so, when we come up against these, these feelings or the spirit of fear, we need to firstly acknowledge that what we fear, give it a name, and still choose to trust God. So, acknowledge what you fear and still choose to trust God. And secondly, we're going to seek God until He takes away our fears. So we're going to seek God until He takes away our fears. And this is exactly what David did. See, he had a lot to fear on the earth, but he drew closer to God. In Psalm 34, 4, it says, I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. You see, overcoming fear is not just a willpower thing. We're not just going to uh, grit our teeth and push through it. We're not going to pretend it doesn't exist. We're not just going to allow fear to pass us by. There is a very specific thing that we need to do in order to overcome fear. And that is this, to seek the Lord. Because when we seek the Lord, the Word says, He delivers us from our fears. David said, in God I trust and am not afraid. And so how do we seek the Lord? Well, one of the most fundamental ways is for us to allow the Word of God to penetrate our heart. The Word says that faith, faith in God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So when we allow the Word of God to penetrate our hearts, what happens? Our faith in God and His promises increases and our faith in the what-ifs decreases. And the opposite is true. If we, uh, if we put our focus on the things that uh, are causing our fear to be heightened or stronger, if we're putting our focus on the what-ifs and allowing those things to penetrate our hearts, then our fear increases and our faith in God decreases. Fear is not a part of God. And I want to encourage you this morning to remember that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and a sound mind. That fear has no place or right in your life. And when you can increase your faith, when you can seek God, it will increase your faith and put your focus on the promises of God. I remember a few years ago, uh, you know, you, you have to deal with faith daily. It's a daily thing that you need to overcome. But there was a period uh, in our life that, that we really had to deal with fear and the, and the fear of the unknown, of the what-ifs, on a really on a larger scale. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, before we were pastors of, of New Season Church, we were part of a ministry. I was, I was an associate pastor and I was employed there. Samantha was employed uh, at a school as a teacher. And um, uh, they asked us to move to Polokwane to handle or look over uh, one of the, the ministries. And so we decided by faith we're going to go. We relocated uh, and we moved. Uh, to, to Polokwane and we've been there for about a year and just uh, before the end of the year uh, in November uh, the needs of the ministry changed and in essence they said to us look the needs have changed we actually don't need both of you uh, to be running this this ministry uh, Boyan you obviously part of the ministry and, and we can keep you on but unfortunately Samantha uh, we can't keep you on and uh, and so right then and there the worst case scenario started to go through my mind. I mean, I, I, I could hardly sleep for two days. And the what ifs started to roll. And, we, and I started to go, well, what if this? And what if that? And what if we, you know, what if we stay in Polokwane and we can't, uh, you know, find uh, sustenance? You know, what if we move back to Pretoria and, you know, Samantha can't find the job? And, and what with Ethan? I mean, Ethan was six months old. What are we going to do with Ethan? And what if we can't find the school? And there was just a bunch of what ifs. And, uh, and I remember we had to, we had to make a, a, a very conscious decision to put our focus on God 
and not allow our faith to be in the what ifs, but our faith to be in the faithfulness of God and the provision of God. And so we said, look, we're going to move back to Pretoria. And even that was a very difficult decision. We were very conflicted about it. And we just said, you know what, we're going to move back and we're going to put our faith in God. We're going to trust Him. We're going to believe that God still has purpose in our life. We're still going to believe that God will make, give a, uh, provide for us. And so we moved back to Pretoria. And God did provide. Uh, Samantha's old school said, yeah, we'd love to have you back. Gave her basically a job on the spot. There was favor. Uh, Ethan got him to, into a great school and, and so on. Now, was it still challenging? Absolutely. The challenge was still there. It was very disruptive. You know, taking your whole family and moving back and relocating. And, you know, there was a lot of, lot of what ifs. But it didn't change the fact that God was still faithful and is still faithful. And that decision to really move back and trust God and put our faith in God and put our faith in His faithfulness and not, not in the what ifs was really the seed and the birthing place of what we now know as New Season Church. It was through that period, uh, I think about seven months later, that we really then began uh, making very real plans for, to open and to plant New Season Church. And so God is faithful and remind you that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. And I want to encourage you that in this turbulent time, in this time of the what-ifs, that you place your faith in God and His promises and not put your faith in the what-ifs. And as I close, I want to read this, uh, this quote from John Wesley, who is the founder of the Methodist Church. And it says, I have never known more than 15 minutes of anxiety or fear. Whenever I feel fearful emotions overtaking me, I just close my eyes and thank God that He is still on the throne reigning over everything, and I take comfort in His control over all the affairs of my life. See, John Wesley, the reason why you could say this, the reason why he could say, look, I've never really felt fearful for more than 15 minutes, was that the moment he felt fearful or anxious, he acknowledged God. He acknowledged who God is. He acknowledged that his life was in God. He acknowledged that God ultimately had control over his life because he had submitted his life to God. And the reason that he could have that assurance is because he could trust God. And the reason why he could trust God is because he developed a relationship with Him. You see, trust is a product of relationship. We don't trust people that we don't have a relationship with. And so in order to be in a place of trusting God, we must have a relationship with Him. And this is how we have a relationship with, again, with Him. It is not through works. It is not through doing good things and not doing bad things. It is not through going to church every Sunday. That is not a relationship. Those are byproducts of a relationship. You see, the only way to truly have a relationship with God is through Christ, through Jesus. That the Word says that He is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father, to God, except through Jesus. That our relationship with God starts with acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God. That it starts with acknowledging the fact that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. That He took on punishment. He took on the punishment of sin. And that sin was placed upon Him. And the punishment was placed upon Him. And He took that punishment on our behalf. And that what separated us from God, what broke the relationship, what the sin that broke the relationship between us and God has been dealt with and we have been reconciled with God through the finished work of the cross. That our sin no longer separates us because Jesus dealt with that sin on the cross. That ultimately our relationship with God starts with accepting Jesus as the Son of God, accepting Him as our Savior, but accepting Him also as our leader. So this morning, I want to encourage you, if you've never had a relationship with God, if you've never put your trust in Him, I want to lead you in a prayer this morning, because this is the key to starting the relationship with God and to 
really start developing that ability to overcome here and put your faith and trust in Him. I'm going to lead you in your prayer this morning to accept Jesus as your Savior, to accept Jesus as your substitute for your sin, and to accept Jesus as the one who bridged the gap between you and God and brought you back into relationship with Him. So this morning, if you're sitting at home and you want to say, I, I want to be included in that prayer, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. And this is you speaking to God. So let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. I accept that He died on the cross and He was raised three days later. That He died on the cross for me. That He took on the punishment of my sin. And that through that work on the cross, I have been set free. My sin has been dealt away with. And I'm a brand new creation. The old things have gone and the new has come. A new spirit is deposited within me. And right now, I have been born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you pray that prayer, we want to say well done and welcome to the family. This is a great decision that you make. And it's the beginning of a wonderful relationship with God and the beginning of some great things in your life. So if you made the decision to follow Christ this morning, we'd like to ask you that you let us know by following the link in the description of this video. And uh, we like to send you some resources that we, you will be able to use to help you along with your spiritual journey. Well, this morning I want to take up the offering and I'm going to be reading from Proverbs 11:24 to 25 from the Message Bible. And it says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped and so we see in this portion of scripture that the key to living a wide open and spacious life is generosity that when we say yes to generosity that that starts to open up possibilities and it is the real key to finding freedom and joy and so one of the things that we have to fight against during this time uh, during this time of uncertainty is the fear of lack it is the 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 putting of our faith in the what ifs it is saying well what if i give to god now but then i don't have for this and what if i give in honor god now and take money out of my bank account and, and honor god financially now but then i don't have money for that and so we have to fight against that. We have to fight against the fear of what if. We have to fight against the fear of lack and put our faith in the promise of God. Because the script, scripture is very clear. It says those that are generous, their lives get larger and larger. And those that are stingy, those that hoard, those that say, look, I'm going to keep this, this uh, offering or this tithe. I'm going to keep it for myself because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It is, the word says that those that are stingy, those that withhold, are the ones that their lives get smaller and smaller. And what I've seen personally in my life is that every time I honor God, and, I, and I've been uh, tithing for 12, going on 13 years, I don't think I've ever missed, I've never missed a month uh, to give my tithe. But I can tell you right now that there's not been a time that I have not had food on the table, that I have not had a roof over my head, that I have not had transport money or, 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 or petrol in the car. Now, it hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been a lap of luxury. There, there has been some uh, tight times. There have been some dodgy times. But every single time I've honored God, what happened is that my life got larger and larger. And I want to encourage you this morning to fight the fear of lack, to not put your faith in the what if, but put your faith in the promise of God. The God says, look, if you're generous, if you, if you honor me, your life will get larger and larger. But if you withhold, if you don't honor me, 
then the result of that is a life of getting uh, smaller and smaller. And so I want to encourage you this morning that as you, one of the ways that you are generous is by honoring God with your tithe and your offering. That as you tithe this morning, that you are showing to God that you are placing your faith in Him and not your faith in the what-ifs. And every time we place our faith in Him, every time we put our hope in Him, the Word says we will never be embarrassed and we'll never be in shame. When we put our trust in Him, we will never be at a point where we have to be embarrassed of our decision to hope in God. And so this morning I want to encourage you to give your tithe and to give your offering uh, that's over and above your tithe. And obviously also uh, one of the ways that you can support and give your offering is to give towards our pantry, which is the wing of our ministry that puts together food parcels for families that, that are struggling, that need uh, some food. And so we, 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 we support some families in that way as well. And so we encourage you to, to support us. Obviously, you can't donate uh, physical products, but if you want to donate a monetary amount towards that, specifically for the pantry, uh, we'd like you to, to just mark pantry as you give your offering so we know that we can allocate it to the right, uh, to the right initiative. And so please do that. You can go ahead and give your tithe and offering. The details are on the screen. And you can follow the link to our website, newseasonchurch.co.za forward slash give. And all the details of how to give will be there. And you can make your um, payment of your tithes and your offerings in that way. Well, let's stretch our hands towards the screen and let's uh, pray for the offering this morning. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we're just so thankful, Lord, for the opportunity to give into your kingdom this morning. We thank you, Father, God, right now that as we give and as we are generous with our giving, that we stand on your word that says when we are generous, that we live lives that are larger and larger. Father God, it is the act of generosity that overcomes the fear of lack. And so this morning we choose to put our faith not in the what ifs, but we choose to put our faith in the promise of God. To put our faith in your promise that says that as we give, Father God, you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, everybody. Well, thanks very much for joining us this morning. I trust that you'll have a week of overcoming fear and overcoming uh, the battles in your life. We stand in faith with you and we're believing with you for greater things that this time that we have been in lockdown, that God has been birthing some things in your life. And as we start coming out of lockdown, God is going to start opening up those things and opening up possibilities in your life. And it will be a testimony to God's faithfulness. And as we head out this morning, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to read from Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. And it says that Christ must dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Thanks once again for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you in the week on Facebook. Invite somebody next week. Tag someone in this video. Share this video once it's been posted on Facebook page. We'll see you in the week. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next week, 9 a.m. God bless you. We'll see you then.